Before we get into it there, we just want to remind people that you know, we're supported through Danny Donovan at mm. quickminutes.com. Yeah, Danny's a, a very good friend of both myself and James. He comes from the north side as well and he grew up locally and, you know, he's a, been a massive supporter of the podcast and both myself and James since we actually began and, you know, he's uh, he has his own company called Quick Minutes now and and quickminutes.com is a meeting management application for um, semi-formal and formal meetings. And look, if you want to know more about that, quickminutes.com and supporting Danny, supporting us. Um, so if you're interested in that, check him out and enjoy the rest of the podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Toon Aries podcast. I'm your host, James. I'm not joined as always by my good friend, Timmy Long. Hi, everyone. Willsy is in the hot seat. How are you, Will? Well, well, well. Down from Limerick City, Kate. Down from Limerick City. <laughs> and what a pleasure it is. How was the performance, yeah? Good man, good. I was uh, just saying it to Timmy before we come on that this has been somewhat of a dream to get down and see you. I think, you're, I think you're absolutely incredible people. I think the story that you lead and I think the things that you do with the community is fascinating. So yeah, congratulations you. to you also, boys. Likewise. It's and it's I remember uh, you were on Clearborn Live last week, last year. There was a traveller special mm. and there was a lot of great travellers on, including you and you spoke very well about, you know, you grew up in care yeah. and, you know, the challenges, but you spoke really well. And my wife was a traveller as well. And I remember looking at it thinking that he'd be a fucking great mm. guest for us. So here we are. Hey. And you're a rapper. You're a rapper. Rapper, you poetry. Rapper, more artist, uh, storyteller of many ways. Yeah. Uh, is, is the way so I put it. Before we get into it, we go yeah. right back. Where are, you, like, where, where are you from? What's your family? Where did you grow up? Um, so, of course, my name is Willsey. Uh, I come from... William Casey. William Casey. William Casey. Casey. William Casey. 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 The boxer. Uh, yeah, he'd be my first cousin, yeah. Yeah, do you remember the box? Big yeah, bang, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big bang, will yeah, he yeah, be? Yeah. Yeah. Say I'm the best, but uh, <laughs> we'll, leave that, we'll leave that for a cleaner version. Um, but so where I come from, um, I originally come from a place called Weston, which is based inside Limerick City. Um, I would have came from board full-blooded travelling family. They would have kind of been a very fond of substances and alcohol when they were growing up and stuff. Well, we witnessed that when we were growing up with them. Um, so we ended up going into foster care. We've done a lot of circuits with the foster care. What age were you when you went into foster care? Um, I think I was only a baby, okay. to be honest with you. Uh, I do know that it was four years of age when I arrived at the house that I'm in now that I call my forever home. It's, mm. it's the magic house, as we like to call Fantastic. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, abs- we'll get into it, yeah. yeah. But uh, So we, we would have done the circuits um, and continuously going back and forth between my, my foster home Mam foster home and dad was obviously there as well but the capability of them looking after us as we were growing started to deteriorate more you know so mm-hmm. we were kind of getting longer stints in foster homes and then we as i say we found a forever home then and then people that were foster with um mary and john of course showed up my mom and pops uh, mm-hmm. they never held that life back from us in the sense of we were growing up in foster care we were foster children we were allowed to see our parents yeah. it was hard um, it was very, very hard for, for many visits, many times, but we were always welcome back to a house that was full of understanding, full of care, full of love. And that's not for every foster child mm-hmm. by any means. Like half a kilometre away, my brother and sister, older brothers and sisters, the clock stops with me, thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, my older brothers and sisters, they would, have, they would have had a totally different upbringing and their house that they would have been fostered in was kind of more for a financial benefit than it would have been for mm-hmm. personal benefit, you know. So they would have, they were kind of even looking at us in a sense of like, why are you getting the golden stick, you know. And it's yeah. kind of like, we're not, it's just to look at the way the coin flips. But you, uh, you, you could have had foster parents as well where there might be, Ish prejudice towards travellers and yeah. you could have might you know yeah uh, funnily enough uh, one of the first ever homes that I was fostered in and I remember this very vividly uh, I was in junior infants or something like that and of course like you piss your pants man it's, yeah, it's a natural yeah, thing yeah, you know yeah. but I remember coming back to this <laughs> foster home and uh, this lady uh, I won't mention her name but she ended up putting me into the corner and she was like you can stay there until it dries and like I was like Okay, so I was a child, and you yeah. know, you looked at your adults, and you think this is normal. But her own son was a little bit similar age as me, and he was getting toys. He was allowed up to see. Uh, what was that thing that was on telly, man? Gladiators. You yeah. remember Gladiators? Yeah. 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 Gladiators like a seven o'clock show, six yeah. o'clock Saturday show. That kind of job, you know, Saturday night job. Yeah. We were in bed. At, the second we seen Gladiators start, we were in bed. Her kids equal age after Gladiators. You know that kind of. There was always a difference, and. Yeah. Yeah. 
to me, I think sometimes it is good to have a family that can other, uh, foster other families, but I think you need to address it with the kids a lot as well because kids love love and they love their parents and they love their family unit. And I think if you have to divide the love or you have to share the family unit, I think sometimes there's a level of resentment yeah. and that can be very toxic for upbringings and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? 100%. But anyway, so so I would have, yeah, I would have came from West End. We would have been fostered. Um, from in my forever home now and yeah it's just going to school man to periods of school was good where would, uh, where was the your forever home where was that so i'm based out by killaloo in county clare now oh yeah we have a friend in killaloo yeah yeah, yeah nice yeah. place yeah yeah lovely lovely scenic village um but yeah so i went to school in the in the uh, local the local school the local national school and I suppose going there at the very start was good because people kind of looked at you as in like, who's the new guy, who's the new guy? Mm-hmm. But then you start to find that there's cliques even in these communities and there's families that have rich heritage in these and they don't like you. Yeah. And you could come in there with the best of chocolates and everything, they just don't want to talk to you. They have no interest <laughs> in you. But, you know, so uh, from that then, you have to kind of, well, what I did was I kind of separated myself from them and there was a lot of bullying going on. There was a lot of torment, there was a lot of shame. There was a lot of going and knacker and go away, you dirty, smelly traveler. And yeah. I'm sorry, no. I know, things, but, but that's the reality. But that's exactly, that's what the dish was. It's just horrible to hear, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and then like, teachers would obviously witness all of that going on, but like, they're kind of of the same mm-hmm. view. So they leave it off until it becomes like yeah. a big noticeable problem. But I've, been called knackers by teachers as well or get out you itinerant or something like that and mm. that's all to spark a reaction it's, yeah. it's, it's similar with the guards that's all they do man it's just it's we did a podcast with michael in prison did you see that at all up in cork prison but he told us the experience and all like that yeah horrible from a teacher calling mm. him a knacker are you gonna rob that you know when he was in the metal workshop yeah yeah yeah, like yeah. Uh, but you know the the, the the interesting thing and i've said it before do you know if me and timmy talks about stuff that happened to us mm. People will be in the YouTube comments and, and, and other settled people saying, oh, there's a tough time. It's great to see him doing well and God love him. Mm. But you know, when the traveler gives the story, yeah, oh, yeah. there he is, the victim. Or look you could be sure that they'll up. be under this as I well know. with their own, like, their own uh, yeah. some ways and other. Uh, for me, man, I've built enough resilience now throughout life that you can call me everything and it's good. Do you know what I mean? If you start calling me my, my biological Christian name, then I know I'm in yeah. trouble. But anything after that, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can call me everything after that. Do you know what I mean? My grandmother used to call me. <laughs> and my mother, Timothy. Timothy. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, once I hear <laughs> that word, then I was like, back, oh. man, that's where it comes, yeah. you know? You're getting yourself ready yeah. for... Uh, and that's, what, off, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> broke up, you know? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so just to kind of skim through it a, a, a little bit for you. So primary school section, primary school section would have been grand, as, as of course, as I was saying, a little bit of bullying and stuff. But I think my father died when I was 12 and I was just going to enter into first year at that time. And that was kind of like the pinnacle new school. And, you know, there's a lot of hormones and, and, and stuff running through people. So yeah, yeah. I kind of took that blow very hard. But because I grew up with the last of the chain of children and at the end of when things got bad, that relationship wasn't really uh, fluctuating with love and compassion. So I was kind of able to marginalise it in myself a small bit and be able to deal with it and kind of turn it a bit. But throughout maybe first, second, third year of, of secondary school, there was an anger building that I didn't recognise. There was resentment building that I didn't understand. And it came to third year and then my mother passed away. And my mother out of the two would have been kind of like, the carer before the can went to the mouth, we were fed, we were washed, we were looked after, and then she got wobbly. But everything happened prior to that, and you know, whereas she looked after it to the best of her ability, her like. best of her ability, man. And and I know spuds for life, like you know, she 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 left us with little but a lot at the same time, yeah. you know. And and I value it, I and I, and I hold it very true to my heart. But it was after that, then, and kind of the accumulation from the knock on from dad then to to mam kind of left me in a place of I going to fucking snap here in a minute like why what did I do wrong what why me mm. you get that kind of like what what why like you know isn't has the fucking first zero to 15 not been hard enough now but you want to throw this up on top of it okay yeah. let's deal with it give me it so first the uh, first kind of reaction was to act out with it man it was mm. the was the last show was oh, fuck you you want a smile on your face I'll take that smile off your face mm. My smile is taken off my face and I never asked for it. You don't ask for it, but I'm going to take it anyway. 
that was my that was my understanding yeah. Yeah. and still at the same time i had these beautiful foster parents at home that were still the doors of compassion still all the love still all the understanding but there was something in me that wanted to return to where i came from and that being how the family was viewed but also the area and where i came back from and and when i did return into that area for several years i was green you know because you didn't grow up in that area they didn't grow and up. it can be unforgiving yeah. for people yeah. that aren't yeah. and then you think the flood doors are going to open when you arrive back yeah. they're all going to go ah oh, we knew we were fucking missing something in our life it was you yeah. you know they're not they're not by any means there's and too much going on for them to actually start you yeah know, we think we think that in our heads yeah but there's actually so much going on going on in their lives yeah that yeah it's they're the just wild, barely coping themselves, you know. That's it, and it's yeah. the, like we call it the Wild West. Like, like yeah. there's there's a lot going on in these these deprived yeah. areas. But like, and and as I was saying, you think it's the floodgates opening, but what happens is, I think there's two different levels of life when you live in a country and you live in a city. You have two different understandings. Yeah. You've got street education, you got field education. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know how to make money from a blade of grass, and you make money from buds of grass in, yeah. in town and I think that's the best way of looking at it yeah. but for but for me yeah, having to return back into them areas um, I was still kind of like I want to be your friend like we can be friends I knew you since I was four like we're going to be brothers now again like we're going we're going we're gonna to share lollipops yeah. Yeah. it didn't turn out like that man. I ended up you know getting into a lot of crime a lot of a lot of drug abuse a lot of horribleness a lot of you just wanted to fit in, basically. I, I wanted to fit in, but I wanted to release at the yeah. same time, you know. And and the best person, and this is sound totally wrong, but the best person I ever came across was on Garda Shia Connor. Because mm. now I can play cops and robbers. Yeah. Now I have someone to chase me. Now there's, there's yeah. a bit of entertainment. I'm not just doing it without a, uh, an incentive. And my incentive now is to, you want to challenge me, I'll challenge you. I'm angry, you're angry, let's be angry together. Mm. Let's, let's, mm. let's see who wins. Yeah. Bigger fool me. Mm. You know, bigger, bigger, bigger fool me. What age, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I'm uh, an undisclosed age. Uh, I, l- I let Mid- the common section to decide that now. I'm 30 years of age, man. You're 30 years yeah, of age. Yeah, yeah. What was it like? Like, was it dangerous in West and in Limerick City when you went back? Like, did you get into trouble? Were you a victim? Or, or how did they receive you? Were you an outsider to them? Like, not just your family, but everybody else? Uh, outsider, completely. Outsider to my family, my core family, my my cousins, my relatives, my uncles, my aunts. Outsider, outsider to the to to the wild west. And and again at that time when when I was growing up, like it's not uh, how am I going to say it? To you? It's not hard to to see the lineage in which I come from that are based in both areas. You know, I come from the Casey family, of course. But when you return into these areas, obviously their knowledge and your knowledge are totally different. And they're once they know that they're kind of encouraging you or or influencing you in any way, they'll continue to influence you. You know, and I'm okay with speaking about this because I am a 30 year old man now who, yeah, yeah. who can weather his own storm yeah. in any capacity. You know, but yeah. at that stage. At that stage, man, you're, as I was saying, you're green, you're entering in, you think the family love you, you think they have some, some sort of emotional connection with you, but they don't. They just have a connection with their pocket, and if you can line it, you can line it, that kind of way. So it was kind of yeah. it was kind of hard, man. It was kind of lonely, I won't lie, but... Mm. Things that, your identity as well, like, uh, you know, you're, you've been raised by good people, by the sounds of it, yeah. uh, but there's a part of your lungs for that. Yeah. Other that's stuff, it, yeah. Because you know? yeah. that's your DNA and your blood. That's it, and then you hear like so. My my older brothers, who so I come from a family that would have twenty eight in it, and I would be the baby of the whole lot of that. Two soccer teams with subs. And two soccer teams with <laughs> subs. Was, I, I clearly no televisions and just a lot yeah. of drinking. And twenty eight brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a there's a really yeah yeah yeah. So okay. a lot a lot will be uh, halves, but I never include halves. Yeah, yeah. Just look at it as holes, but yeah, they're, they're brother and sister. Yeah. yeah. So my my older brothers were uh, came through the same system, same foster care systems, uh, received the same way by people, and they would have broken a different mold for themselves, and they would have got really into the to the to the goings on of yeah. these communities, and they were really invested in it and made names for themselves. What could they are today? I don't know, but they made names at that time, early nineties, early nineties. You know when mm. things were thriving, um, but but that's what I was trying to chase. I was just like, mm. you know, all right, I'm his brother. Yeah, you want me? I'm his brother, yeah? I'll go and be his brother. You think I can't be worse than him? I'll be, wor- I'll be, ten to- I'll be worse than you and him and your whole family. You wanted, you wanted the respect that they were getting from yeah. the community. I couldn't understand yeah. it. I couldn't see how, why they were so appreciated and why yeah. it felt like, still at that yeah. stage, felt like shit in the... Were you drinking and taking drugs at this time? Heavily. Like I was, 
first introduced to the Xenix, man. Xenix yeah. was, was one of the fucking... Forget me nuts, I call them. Like, oh. You know what I mean? You could do anything. They were my big drug. I was what taking the heroin now, but the tablets, Xanax, the D10s, they were the big D5s. thing. Like. Did you see them? But D- they, they used to make me suicidal, the D5s. Did they, yeah? yeah. They are, man, they are the slippiest slope you could ever get yeah. in your life because they're so mild yeah. that you don't... Do you but so, the end, yeah, yeah, they're so impacting at they're the same time. Until you go through the 90 from an half, no. And you'll turn around into the next. You're not getting that half. These... But you know it's what I'm you know what I'm mad about yeah. the D5s? You forget them. Yeah. We used to get D10s, right? Uh, so if in the odd occasion the chemist didn't have the D10s, now this is, doesn't make sense. Mm. But you know, for 90 D10s, if the chemist didn't have the D10s, they'd give you 180 D5s, right? Because it's the same thing. All a D5 is a diazepam, 5 milligram. Yeah, yeah. A D10 is a diazepam, a 10 milligram. So logically, one D10 is the same as two D5s, but when you take it, it's not. The two D fives aren't as good as one D ten, and when you come down off the D tens, it's not great. But when you come down off the D fives, it's way worse. It's way more of a come down. You get suicidal, mm. and you start getting mad shit into your head. Mm. Whereas after the D tens, you don't get as depressed. I felt anyway. It's it's mm. another thing, man, which is kind of unfortunate is that, you know, when when you're in addiction and you're looking like. Early days when I was smoking cannabis, right, I used to go in and get maybe seven grams and I'd have it micromanaged to the fact of four joints a day, why mm. seven, seven yeah. grams, you know. You're, you're, yeah. so, so when you get, it's like going to a dealer and getting extra. You think you're going to have them joints when the exact same you are and you're fuck, you're going to have <laughs> eight in one, eight in the other, yeah. you know. And that's the same with the tablets. Yeah. You get 180, 80 D10 or D5s. Yeah. You're taking fucking eighty of them that day, well, yeah. straight out, like, and 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 you know, yeah, and probably take the other really that night. Yeah, yeah, or you, um, or you'll find someone who will help yeah, you, and you, yeah. you'll work through it together. You know, yeah. You'd or like, if you woke up at five o'clock in the morning for a piss, yeah. you can't go back to sleep nah. until you take a good coffee from like because you know they're there. Yeah, that, that was another <laughs> thing. <laughs> or you know, the next morning after all the tablets, you wake up bright as you be, wouldn't you? Yeah, right, like what are we going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. mad head there, grog dude, grog dude. You get into a lot of trouble though. Uh, I I would have man and and to be honest with you I was my own worst enemy and my own biggest fool to be honest because even at times I got so interested in chasing all them names and I got so interested in all that thing that at one point I just thought this is your life for them you know like this is what you're doing now like do you know you come to do, terms do you know the, the the people that brought you up yeah your your home your loving home yeah okay where were they you know what kind of, were they sad to see you going down that road like were they worried for you yeah. like they, or did they leave you do your thing and and but they always kept an open arm then for you did they? so my mama and pops are two two different people and and sometimes i look at them and say how did you ever fall in love yeah. you know because they're, they're they're opposites in a lot of ways but evens and others my pops was kind of at the stage of if you want to go and be reckless if you want to go and live your life that way get out and do it mm. My mama was like, just pick up your phone at the end of every day. Just let me know where you are. All I want to know is if you're safe. Just answer your phone. Yeah. And that was kind of always the daunting thing. And then I began to try and charge my phone. And then I tried to begin to look for someone who had a phone to let them know. And just because she kept there, and he kept there as well, of course, they're still there today, thank God. But just because that was constantly there and that support system was always there, it reassured me that no matter how bad things are, I can I can mm. get a little bit of respite at home. And you know, there's there's love at home. So this hard world that I'm facing myself into and this this tough man fucking shit that I'm trying to do, t- t- go home, boy. Mm. You know? And I spent as you were saying, I spent a lot of time getting into trouble. Mm. As I was saying, play cops and robbers with the guards, racked up a couple of charity seats. I've done things in my life, to be honest with you, that I'm completely ashamed of, and I will forever and 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 ever carry it with me. Things that, look, me personally, if I was in here on my own in this world, I'd be gone straight away. But I can't because of babies and children and or yeah. or partners and stuff. So I try and stay stable, and that's why I try and get into education. That's why I try and better it. But if it wasn't due to the things that I've done in my life, I would probably. But yeah. you know the stuff look for a passport to heaven you know, like you know the stuff you've done in your life yeah. and the stuff we've done in our life we can't undo that mm. and it, that's a very hard thing though no but no what you can do it is it's like you're, you're doing your course now mm. in addiction studies right and you want to go back and he- you're going to prevent the next fella from doing the things you did 
and by the podcast, but no, we're going to prevent the next person from being hurted. That's all you can do. Make amends and try to make sure that then it doesn't happen again. Mm. And listen, that's all you just have to stop beating yourself over the back. And you know, like you were a hot junk for right. that. We'd made mistakes. You know, we've all well, like um, sometimes I can take the whip back out of my closet as well and start beating myself again. For for a long time, I I really, really, really put myself down and beat myself to death about to carry on over me because when I drank and drugged and I was a fucker like I, mm. I was a I wasn't a nice person you know and um, I done stuff that I regret and that I'll take to the grave and regret you know but by keeping myself down on the floor and keeping myself depressed and 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 um, just sitting still in a room watching the television away from everybody else I'm not doing any justice to anybody I'm not helping anyone. So by me sitting here at this table with James, yourself and all our other guests and talking about my experiences and you talking about yours, we're actually helping people, okay? Mm. We're helping other people. Yeah, like some people mightn't like that me and James are here or you're here or some of the other guests are here talking and giving this platform. But you know what? We're trying our best. Yes, yeah. What do you want us to do? Do you want us to stay at home and keep the whip mm. and keep baiting ourselves? Or do you want us to come in here and talk about these issues that may potentially mm. help somebody but, that loves you yeah. at some stage in their life? Or help. Uh, this is what I find. And this is really why I got into the music side of things as well, is to help those who love you understand you a bit more as well. Because I think when you're in addiction and when you're going through them kind of things, it's, it's you're so obviously you love them with all your heart, but you you love yourself more and you hate yourself so much that you put yourself into an isolated spot. And even when like you're taking drugs or something like that, it's not romantic to take drugs. It's it's lonely and it's yeah. horrible and yeah. it's and it, but and you and you substitute that for a home. And you know, and, and you can kind of get lost. And and for me, it was the condemning. It was the condemning, the constant, you let them down, you're a failure, you let them down. I was very lucky that at one part of my life, I think it was like 18 or 19, and I, and I had been with these lads from the opposite end of the town, same D is their names, and they were rapping. And I had heard a cousin of mine who came from my Ross, and he brought me to a Christian meeting. I was like, oh, yeah, man, we love to Christian meetings. And he was like, no, nah, cause trust me, like, come. And I was like, go on, so I'll go. So sitting down and I started listening. And I was like, no, nah, not for me. And then he was like, come over to my house. I rap. And I was like, fucking, this is going to be entertaining, if nothing else. Mm. But he was sick. He was properly like, yeah, he's good, like you know, good, like, and, yeah, yeah. He'd done his resorts with the 90s. He had, he had everything, like, you know. So he spun me this English fella. Um, and I was like, yes, love him. He was like, cuz, why don't you do that? And I was like, oh, yeah, man, we love what the people think about me. Then I ended up being around a, a group of friends from the island, and they were doing it. So I was like, where's the Western Massive? Like, there's no one doing it Western, like. Yeah. So I ended up one day walking into town with the island boys, and there was this little man there, his name was John Lillis. Absolutely lovely. I hope you don't mind me mentioning No, I think it's John Lillis, yeah. yeah. No, that name, well. Tommy Yarvin spoke with Tom yeah. Lillis. Tom, that's Tom Lillis. Uh, but, but John, he, uh, I honestly, I honestly can say he's probably one of the pinnacle turns in my life because I came down to this fella. Go, What's happening? And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, because he comes with Claire, you know. And he, was like, uh, and he beats, nah, and he beats for me, nah, you'll give him the boys beats and he beats. And he was like, yeah, whatever, yeah. <laughs> so it was funny that I started getting that interest and God, it works in mysterious ways because he ended up being a lecturer at the community college that I ended up signing up for because I wanted to go do music production and, and sound and things. I wanted to get into it. I wanted to learn my shit now. And there he was. And I was like, and he beats, nah? And he was like, oh, like, like, as in here, he is in the door. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, if you finish the year out, I'll give you a beat. And at this time, this man was turning over, like, won RT Prize Awards with his group and yeah. stuff. So the beats were really, really, like, so one a penny kind of thing, you know. Yeah. So I got through the got through the college, gradually three quarters of the way through the first year, and then he said to me, um, "I'm going to give you a challenge. This is for beat number two now." Because he said, "I think you're going to get beat number one." So I want you to do a spoken word, because at the time, you know, so heavily influenced by by other music yeah, yeah, yeah. that he was like, "Bring it down to your own tone. Get it down to who you are. Grassroots stuff." So I said, "Yeah, no problem." First ever spoken word piece I would have wrote was called The Trebuffer's Tale. And The Trebuffer is 
Traveller blood, which I come from, and buffer rearing, because that's what they call them. So I said... Buffer somebody settled. Buffer's a settled person. Because I used to meet my cousins, you say, are you a traveller or are you a traveller or are you a buffer with them? And obviously I'm a true buffer. And they said, go away with your stupid statements, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't understand it. What was yeah. it called? A tra buffer. It's a mix between the traveller yeah. and the buffer. Do you want to give blood. us a blast of that? Uh, if you can. Or if you have something, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, but just, just yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's that song's flourish. I'm interested in that because yeah, yeah. growing up, no, like I would have been in uh, travelers, would have been a big, big, big part of my life as well. Mm. And uh, like you'll always hear a lot of people would know what a buffer is, you yeah, know? Right. a lot of people in yeah, ma yeah. mainstream society they would know what a buffer is, you know, and um. And uh, we'd often be in these circles, and and I'd be with travellers, and we'd bump into other travellers, and they say, "Who's what, what's the story with the buffer?" Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. It, it, like yeah. excluded from yeah. the circle, yeah. like and who's the buffer, man? Yeah. 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 Do, you know do you know what's a very popular word mm. in Cork for travellers describing other travellers? Sublick. Sublick. But yeah. I don't hear that as much outside the Cork. Is that a thing in the yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sublick goes way back. That's a young flower, man. And then you got a nausea, which is which is yeah, yeah, the well. Yeah, yeah. There's the, there's the gammon. My my uncle Lord Murchinham, he wrote a book about it. The traveller canter gammon. Yeah, he used to call him the candlelight painter. He used to lock himself into a pub at night, and he was fond of the drink. But in return, he'd be in the pub at night, but he'd turn out a painting. So he'd paint on plates and leave it there. But anyway, yeah. well, you know when we work, you know where we're from in yeah. the north side, of the north west Cork City. Yeah, there's a lot of travellers mm. where where we're from would be living in houses and the hotel side. So what people call Northside slang is actually a travel or language that we've integrated into our into own. the community. So it's like, yeah. or the, the Norries, because that's where we come from, the north side, because we're called the Norries. So fiend, people say the Norries, the Fiend, the Bjorn, but that's actually not Nori language. That's our Nori saying that's the travel or language yeah. that we've took on because we're surrounded by travellers, isn't it? Yeah, and the funny thing about it is uh, the Irish travel or language and travel or language in general is like, predated uh, back into Ohm nearly language so like even before Gaelic was even formed like Traveller Canting Gammon was even back there and so like that was kind of the protection against the set man because the set man was coming for them you know that kind yeah, of thing yeah yeah but yeah yeah it's been around a hell of a long time mm. um, you know your history well, yeah. small, a small bit yeah it, like in the lines of the travellers man like having grown up in that setting and before I'd done the trouble for his tale and stuff I was kind of ashamed of being a traveller because mm. I was already getting beat for being a foster child I was getting beat for being fucking an alcoholic son called Willie mm. you know like you know when you're a child you hear someone saying alright Timmy or Jimmy yeah. or yeah, Willie yeah, and it's yeah. like Willem, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. not Timothy, but you you, yeah, you get yeah, where I'm coming from, and uh, like other other areas would call William, but yeah. in, in the north side here as well as Willem as well. Yeah, it's not William. No, no, it's William, William is pure passion. No? Yeah, yeah, it's William. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ever call me that <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> unless we're signing something for him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, moral of the story, man. So I started just to kind of try and integrate, reintegrate myself back into the traveling community, figure out what was the lineage of the family, who was I, what was I about. Um, and I ended up coming across a cousin of mine called Mags Casey. I, we, I don't know Mags Casey, but I know of her. Yeah. She's meant to be a great woman. She'd be a good guest for us if you could make the... Oh, don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, for her, she she was delighted in, in the, the traveller life for me. She is a very, very highly educated woman and she's salt of the earth, man. She's so level-headed. She knows all about everything. So any questions I had, even about my family, my mother, my father, what life was like, because she's older than me, she was able to give me an answer. Mm -hmm. So that for me re re embedded the pride that I had because I knew that, as we were saying, the dirtiness that you feel or the shame that you feel, you can now put that to the side because you've got the answer. You yeah. that chiselled that little part away, you know. That's great, isn't it? <coughs> yeah. So uh, then for the the Trebuffer's tale, that was kind of like me unifying everything, and then from there, man, I think. I think I ended up getting the beat from John in the end, um, yeah. and I got the second one. Then we went into Music Generation. I know you have Music Generation mm -hmm. here in Cork yeah, City yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Man. yeah, yeah, GMC, shout yeah, out GMC, right. yeah. an incredible man as well. Yeah. 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 Very nice fellow as well. Yeah, so I would have done the circuit then with Music Gen for a while in Limerick, and they were so open, man. Like, I was coming in, pants into the socks, hold up, <laughs> watch the story. Well, yeah. You have to rap, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it was just like, all right, lad. <laughs> Down the room on the left, you know? That kind of way. You didn't give a shit what way I was coming in. Me, you you know? were saying that, I was just saying, I was back in the middle of the prison, you know, like, the boys, you know, yeah, fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you get it in there as well. Yeah. Um, 
but but that was the kind of thing trying to trying to hold on to egos and characters and stuff. But they're soon broken. Prison will break your ego, and 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 music chain will break your yeah. ego <laughs> in the sense of they'll leave you off. Um, so yeah, they, I would have done the circle with them for a while again, and the things um, very understanding people, absolutely lovely. They just give you the facility, man. You come in, you rap, shout at the wall there for a couple of hours. Greatest bit of therapy I've ever come across. Yeah, because you're you're able to express yourself. I, I, like you're able to write down your thoughts and you're able to be creative and you know, I was it's like a personal development tool isn't it I was receiving charge sheets no I charge for sheets mm. that's one of the lines that uh, I say you know yeah, and that's that's the way I look at it and I'm very would you freestyle or would you would you have um, so we'd have, have freestyles we'd have like so when we were we were coming up as I was saying we had what we call our north side which is more us and then we have the island and western so we had our, our representatives we're all grateful friends but when it came to music then and rapping it was competition out the door so yeah. we would try and better each other every time we would go in there each week someone would come with some fucking fantastic and you'd have to go home you would nearly even leave there and then go home <laughs> and say, oh, fuck it, you know but you'd always you'd have your week like and, yeah. and that was the thing and it was kind of set up like that um who said something about child sheets say that again so i used to receive child sheets but no were charged for sheets Do you know what it reminded me of kanye west I'm trying to write my wrongs, but it's so funny them same wrongs have me write my songs. I I'm trying to write yeah, my yeah. wrongs. Yeah, but trying to it's funny them same wrongs help me write my songs. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's a mm. good piece. That's yeah, a yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I like your one is better because yeah. the chart like, sheets. I I know what chart sheets are. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And it makes it more local and more relatable. Mm. Do you know Paflin? I do. I'm a big Paflin fan. If he ever listens, shout out to Paflin. Love Paflin. Yeah, yeah. He had a kind of a bit of a thing there with a Limerick rapper. Lynchy, yeah. Lynchy, yeah. yeah. Like, would he would he be involved in the, the the scene? Like, is it a small rap scene in Limerick or is it a big rap scene? Or? So it would. Our rap scene, man, it is is home. It's a family unit. Like everyone that was in music gen at that time. Some of them have surpassed any expectation that we would ever have. Mm. Some have gone on like to do incredible things, and and some of us are still here in a community regional area. But there is other people that would have been banging on with music in around the city and stuff, and that would have never kind of interlinked with others and let us. And it's not like you have to let us know that you're doing music or anything like that. But like we are after spending X amount of time developing a network, a scene, a frame, like everything that you're doing now and being accepted for. We've taken the blunt of that on our chins. Right. You know what I mean? Kway Yang, Square you, you Yankee Dude rap and all this. And it's kind of like, now we persisted through that. So yeah, there is, yeah, yeah. now it's more open. But back then, you could say nearly nine years ago, eight years ago, there was barely a scene in Limerick and having developed it. And then we were so core with the rap. To hear, come on, come on, come on, small bad boy with a gypsy yeah. girl. It was just like, oh, you strangle you in a minute. We'll get off the microphone. Because <laughs> we were here like premeditating, like, daddy left me and mommy had, you know, yeah. and then this fella's like, yeah, bang the beer on the back of the motor. Uh, you know? yeah. And I got respect for it. Uh, but at that time, I was like, oh, you have to put next amount of hours. Big fool me again. Uh, but yeah. but uh, yeah, Jackie never, never, uh, he never really linked in with us. But there's no resentment to anyone that doesn't link in. It's yeah, just kind of yeah. like, it's a harder road going on your own than yeah. it is when you can, you yeah. know, because you might have a show and I mean, you might let me on and we might share fans and I might go to your show. Yeah. That's kind of where you need to be going in Ireland. Mm -hmm. We had a rapper on there yeah. a few months ago, a cock full of trigger. Mm. But he's had good success now. It's, you know, he's had brilliant music videos and uh Stateside, so yeah. Yeah, but he raps in his own Cork accent. Mm. He's not trying to be an American rapper. He's not like trying as he said to us, I'm not trying to be a rapper. I am a rapper. I'm mm. from Cork. I rap my own language or my own uh, uh voice and are about the own issues in my own area. Is that the kind of the kind of vibe you have? Do you rap like in Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent and big up to Trigger. I know Trigger on a personal level, an absolute great human being. Um and I congratulate him on all his his stuff says though because then again you have someone who's trying to be a wolf and go find their own niche and he's yeah. doing it so well. He's he's on things like tracks with legends, sons yeah. or legends themselves or something. And people overlook that, you know, like people aren't giving that young like his dues mm -hmm. because it's Ireland and because, you know, yeah. So who's he think he it's is? It's so older than arm and yeah. left. Where will he still. ever get from that? Yeah, he paid yeah. them. You know, it, it, the talent can get you a certain amount of way, but if they don't believe it, you pay them. Yeah. You gave me, I paid to come down here now today. Like, yeah. there's a lot of people that would say that as well, you know, yeah. that, that kind of a... Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, for me, writing, everything has to be in my own thing. As as I was saying to you earlier, I used to rap in an English uh, accent because it was so heavily influenced from that. Yeah. That gets you so far. That gets you through the training camp. That doesn't get you through the fight. Yeah. The fight is to get into your own rhythm, your own routine, your own, you know, figure yourself out and then bring that to the table. Mm. That's a lot more interesting than copying <clears> and pasting <throat> something from the 90s or, or yeah. another artist you know yeah but you've yeah. got a great way with words there even the yeah. phrases you're coming up how you're expressing yourself and you can create these analogies to kind of articulate your point but you are a very well educated yeah you, you, i can see that through you. your vocabulary like yeah that was the other side yeah. the other side was coming from the traveling community yeah. because people assume because you come from the traveling community that you're illiterate you you you're back to front. You, you, you know, there's all these kind of like stigmas and and absolute horrible assumptions yeah. that people do. And so one of the things I took was, you'll never say that I'm an illiterate traveller anyway, because I will fucking if I have to, I'll be the spokesperson for them. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of way. And so and that's what and that's what travel travellers need. Yeah, essentially, yeah. You know, yeah, they need yeah. voices. You know, yeah. it's the same as people in our communities. Mm. You know, when I say our communities, no, I mean like where where I come from, where there's a lot of drug addiction, a lot of alcoholism, a lot of crime and violence. You know, people need a voice because there's a lot of great, great people up there. Like, yeah. you know, like um, the communities full of great people. Yeah. That they might never have the platform. Or, like you know, have, and, that's, yeah. and that's what we do. You know, and 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 it's, I'll just uh, give give a brief example, like. Um, if you go into a house in in our area, you will be welcomed at the door with a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. They will throw something on, a breakfast on you that morning. I'm counting, I, go in, I, do, I do work for people in their homes and stuff. And they will try to feed you. <laughs> Stuff you know, the gills, that's man. how he's so big. You know, you know, and <laughs> then, the and then when, when you're going, like, they'll, they'll, they'll look after you, they'll pay or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's, it's such a great, great, great way that's a welcoming thing, man. I you know what I mean? Yeah, it's great to feel a part of something, man. Even like uh, last year, I, w I got the absolute honor, an absolute honor to to write a short spoken word for the Limerick Hurling team uh, going forward for the for the three in a row. And like when I heard that it, like, like that RT were on board with it and stuff like that, I was like, oh, fuck off. And they were like, yeah, and they were like, we're coming down. Is there anywhere that you center focus want to go? And I was like, yeah, Weston. And they were like, what? Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you're coming to Weston, yeah? yeah? And they were like, I don't know about that. And I goes, well, I don't know if I can have the piece on it because I want my community in it. I don't want you coming down here for Sunday World Report. Yeah. I want you to come down here and also highlight the beauty in the place. Yeah. And I can promise you this, lads, and it is on video. I have never seen Weston going from snow white to green and white in a matter of yeah. uh, hours because yeah. they heard something good was happening. There is, yeah. there is a woman called Breda Cosgrove, absolute queen of Weston. Uh, when we were in foster care, we bad hard times at home, she used to fill up massive blue bags of fruit and wagon wheels and all these and just deliver them up to the house and never ask for nothing. So the first place when I knew that RTE were willing to come to Weston on a good foot, I went straight into Breda and Breda was like, send out the troops, they're coming. <laughs> my banners everywhere. She's in her green and white jersey. She's never worn jersey in her life. She's in it now, you know what I mean? Oh, powerful woman, beautiful. Yeah. beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to the Limerick, uh, Cork, Limerick down in Cork Sale tonight for the Hurling, the uh, National Hurling League. Yeah. Like, in the great honour, one of the best Hurling teams of the past 50 years going for three in a row and you're able to do that piece from, you know? Man, it's, mm. it's the turn around in your life. Yeah, yeah, like. yeah, yeah, it is. And it comes from just similar to yourselves, lads. It just comes from no thanks and constant dedication, kind of constantly driving at the same thing and making it just an inch, or even a half an inch better every time. And you know, and and if if you get a knockback, it's only knock back a half an inch to go yeah. forward another half an yeah. inch, you know that kind of way. Yeah. And I think if you do it in them accumulated steps, you're laughing. You know, yeah. you know I, I strongly feel that. And it's about facing that fear. Yeah, you know, we are the fear that we'll get rejected, that people won't want us, and all these different things. But it's about facing it, moving on to the next step, get that knock back, and keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah. And looking at what you're doing in a positive way, look at the people you're helping instead of the people that, that just don't want to help. Well, and like, that's it. I they agree, outweigh yeah. it massively. Trust me on that. Don't they, Jim? Yeah. That's why I think the community thing was something big. And that's why I went to co I'm in college now at the moment and I'm studying community and addiction studies, right? And so a part of that is that we have to go on work placement and the place that I'm in work placement now is called the Learning Hub in, in Limerick and I box there as well and I do and I record music there nice one. but like 
having so I've never worked with kids well I have many nephews and nieces but in the capacity of like facilitating for children I've never done that and to be I don't, I've, I've said this at home last night I just kind of want to be that older brother I never had to a kid that doesn't have an older brother yeah. or that inspiration you know and I want to always keep one foot community based local regional and, and yeah. continuously better that because without that what are we you, you know, and I think that's something that could be even passed along to Trigger as well. Trigger has done a lot of his work here in Cork before he went stateside. Yeah. And don't forget to come back or don't forget to acknowledge mm. what he has done, you know, yeah. because as as we were saying, that it, half an inch, you take your community that half an inch every time. Yeah. Let that be the traveling community, settled community, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah, yeah building, 100%. Like, Do you want to close us off with a bit of spoken word? Tell me why we were left here. Well, most of what we love is dead years. Yeah, we've shed tears. Haven't you? Unknown as to why it makes us feel positive, share negative views. Spreading lies to keep hatred away from the truth, but never realising that they too could self-abuse, feel down and never choose to reveal that true news. Cause our loyalty nowadays only relies on a few and it keeps decreasing. When karma's a bitch, tell me who are they really pleasing? Most keep trying to find a reason where second chances are foreseen. But to an ordinary fiend or bure, they better start to dream. Cause I'm pretty sure, some develop hatred to the core. You live by the knife, you die by the sword. And this is the city and unpretty lady when it comes to war. Divided into four and my four, taking shots at four doors. Let the past be the past, we take it further. A row over smacking since then, look at all the murders. Publicans, bouncers, fathers and brothers, and of course, the ones that were never heard of. Well, family still to this day pray that they turn up. That pain remains, knowing it may never happen. Well, you are outside the doors and nagging, abusing, passing paddy wagons, bragging to rob cars and crash them. But the legends I knew would have flew past in, had the tunes full blast, and joined out the window wash, noise in the roads, no distraction, burning the shades over and under passing. But they too met to avoid interactions when that car mounted the curb and lost traction. Jailbirds! Tell me why is this so attracting? Why the girls start attaching themselves to these men? Fully knowing it ain't gonna last when the boyish ways will get them put back into that six by ten. Enjoying those six minutes when the phone rings, but when the call ends, reality storms back in. Acting fake in front of your friends. Saying you're okay, but it's all pretend. But just like him, their thoughts are different now. You've learned to live without. But what causes him to shout is that little seed of doubt that eventually grew. Unknown as to what you were doing, hearing about the ones that are screwing a few while their fiends is up in the twos, makes his emotions confused. He begins to feel positive, sharing negative views. Thank you very much. Well done, well, thank you, boy. Thank you, boys. Well done, boy. And of course, thank you very much for having me. As well, I said, well, it, welcome, it, it, it's been a dream and an honour. And uh, just a shameless plug. Shout out to welcome to the new world, the gaff, the learner hub, Limerick, my mama, my past, my bloodline, the lineage, and everyone else. Watching. Where can people well, get in well, contact well, with Jeff? They want to say hi, your father, yeah? Uh, so you can get me on social media at uh, Wilzy Tewo, that's W-I-L-L-Z-E-E-T-W-O-W, -W, Wilzy everywhere, really. Um, and if you struggle to do that, send me a letter, but may never come. But yeah, find me on social media. We'll, that's link, your, better. we'll link your stuff in the description. Yeah, the, the that'd be ideal. Spotify and all the other things. Thanks, as well. Well, yeah. mm -hmm. But listen, lads, thank you. Yeah. God bless you. Right. Thank you, boy. And the best of luck with the course, you yeah. know, because you're going to be able to yeah, give back so much. Trust me. Please, God. Well, I'm Thank you, Thank boys. You. Thank you.